Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Away Games of Chicago Cubs, and now very much just a baseball podcast at the moment because we are way out of the season as Cubs people, uh, but the, the season is still going on. We got World Series starting today. My name is Kevin McCaffrey, and oh, look who it is. It's Adam Mamawala over here. Hey, do you want to make this into a Bulls podcast? I feel like that that might be the move for us. Uh, that, that's true. Yeah, four and zero now, right? Four and zero, oh, man. First yeah. time since ninety six, ninety seven, when I think they started twelve and zero. Oh, it was yeah, like, just something like it. They had won seventy two the previous year, and then it was like, oh, they're gonna win every game this year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, and then. I think they only ended up winning what, like sixty nine or something that yep. season, or sixty nine and thirteen. Much yeah. to my chagrin, they they lost the last game. They could have had seventy two years in a row, but you know what? We got them rings. We got them rings. Yes, but that that's exciting. It is more exciting. First of all, follow us uh, on Twitter at Away Games Pod. We're still active there, and we'll be active there through the off season. Um, but the this World Series matchup. Uh, the the baseball will be good, and I just I'm not terrifically enthused about rooting for anybody. But uh, you know, I I'm rooting against the Astros, I guess. But that's that's about that's where I am as a fan going in here. How are you feeling approaching this World Series beginning tonight? Yeah, I mean, uh, we we got some hate on it for uh, for saying this on Twitter, and I will I will take responsibility for this in case you don't agree. But once the LCS matchups were established, I was like, oh, I don't want to root for any of these four teams anymore. Oh, who's and hating then, on that? I feel like it's friggin' detestable. I, I think I use the word detestable, most detestable <laughs> uh, postseason in a tweet of mine. Whatever so, you got. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think I I am definitely rooting for the Braves. Um, but Same. there are so many issues with the Braves as an organization that are just hard to get over. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard about the uh, the fact that like for the kind of like anti-bullying day, every team had changed their their Twitter logo and had made mention of like, you know, being pro LGBTQ. Yeah, it was like Pride the, Day, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the only teams to ex ex explicitly and intentionally not do that um, and remove it from their messaging were the Atlanta Braves and the Texas Rangers, which yeah. are the least surprising teams to do that. But um, I, it's here's the thing. It's hard to hold any of that against the players, and I don't think that it's fair no. to. Yeah. Um, and in terms of Braves that I like, Jock Peterson is fun with his with his pearls and his blonde hair. Mm -hmm. Freddie Freeman, I, I consistently feel, is one of my favorite non-Cubs uh, and has been for quite some time. I it's cool to see Solaire, even though he's not playing that much because he was out with COVID, but he had a, a big double in, in that final game. Um, so there there are enough people on the Braves that I want to see succeed. When it, when it comes to the Astros, I don't even know who I'm rooting for. Like Dusty Baker, maybe. And then yeah. like, I don't know. It was cool when Martin Maldonado made that big play and got all jacked up. But like, <laughs> I, I feel like the only way that I can even stomach the Astros winning the World Series is if none of the people who were like heavily involved a few years ago do well but that makes it almost impossible because they still have rings too yeah yeah they'd still have rings and also i i guess my point is that correa and and altuve and bregman are all really really arrogant uh mm. and like defiantly so <laughs> mm -hmm. in a way that bothers me which i i listen I, I, I feel like it's hypocritical to be like, oh, I love when Javi Baez pimps a sack fly, but I don't like Carlos Correa pointing at his, uh, you know, imaginary putting at the watch fake watch. Home yeah. Run. yeah, but I, I do feel that way because I don't like them. That's the difference. <laughs> yeah, well, it's sort of like I've heard uh, like women say something like this where it's like uh, there will be like two two guys will send them a certain kind of text or approach them in a certain kind of way at a bar. Mm -hmm. And with one of the guys they they appreciate it and with the other they don't and that's because they're attracted to the guy the one guy like it's just right. like sometimes you like things from about one person because you like them and you don't like things that the other person does because yeah. you don't like them and not liking carlos correa is on its own merit separate from javi baez too like there's reasons to not like Car carlos correa that don't exist for javi baez so i think that's perfectly fine to uh you know to be annoyed by like i don't typically care about the you know or, or get worked up about celebrations like that but he's corny like carlos correa carlos corny <laughs> rea is uh he is like 
just the like you said the defiantly cocky thing it's like beyond the it's like being being cocky can be fun in sports but these victim mentality like skeezes on this team who are just like don't feel an ounce of guilt about everything and they truly believe they're doing a like everybody right. was against us it's like no you had science on your side you were like right. there's not like it's not like everyone decided they didn't like the astros you guys were shits you guys were cheating shits and they're like how dare you notice we were cheating is like their whole vibe now right. uh so yeah it's, it's a lot like the uh you know Louis C.K. or Chris D'Elia comeback tour. It's like you're coming back from an issue that you created. <laughs> you did this. Yeah, exactly. It's not heroic. What takeaways did you have from the uh, LCS matchups? Because obviously we haven't really talked about that um, since last week. And I think they were just getting started that night or or maybe there had been like a game. Like, are, are you surprised at who ended up winning? I, I think my initial pick going into the playoffs was Dodgers Astros. So I got half of the equation right. But mm -hmm. even going into the these respective series, that's kind of how I thought it was going to go. Uh, what about you? I think uh, the, the Astros making the World Series were the only thing that made me kind of want to see the Dodgers in the World Series. Because, mm -hmm. look, I don't want any of these teams to win anyway. At least that's like a in, a... in a pro wrestling world, that's who you would match up. Because the Astros cheated... In a year, the Dodgers po very possibly would have won otherwise. So it would have been fun to see them hate each other so much. You know, I think that was so. Um, Certainly would have been chippy at points. Absolutely. So I think that would have been cool. Um, yeah, I thought the Astros were clearly better than the Red Sox. I thought the Red Sox got on a hot run, but I don't I, I didn't think the Red Sox were necessarily better than the Yankees. I didn't think the Red Sox were uh, better than the Rays. So I think the Red Sox took it as far as, you know, as far as really they could. Um, so, yeah, no, the I, I I was not at all surprised to see the Astros win. And then like Braves over the Dodgers, it's just like you know the dodgers uh i think the dodgers are also a better team but the braves have just been super hot for two months now so um right. i was yeah so i was like a little bit surprised uh to see it but also it's i mean the the dodgers do have starting pitching even though they lost a lot of their starting pitching um it was really fun to watch julio urias uh lose a bunch and be bad that was cool um but like the Braves in, in going into this World Series, one strength the Braves do have is they actually use starting pitchers <laughs> like, you know, they have like several starting pitches, they have pitchers, they have Charlie Morton, who's been very good, Ian Anderson, Max Freed, like they have uh, they had a few starters and like that is helpful. You know, I know it's it's in vogue to go full on bullpenning all the time in uh, in in postseason, but I think that was yeah. a thing that really helped them. And them getting uh, Ian Anderson back towards the end of the season helped them a lot too because he's been mm -hmm. he's been pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I so basically for the uh, the Braves Dodger series in that game where it felt like the Braves were going up about to go three zero and then Bellinger hit a home run possibly even higher than the one that Schwarber hit off of Garrett Cole in the mm -hmm. one game playoff. Yeah, um, that to me felt like oh no. Like the Dodgers are going to now win four straight and it's just going to be like that moment changed everything. But credit to the Braves because they had to have been thinking a lot about what happened last year once they went up 2-0 and then and then 3-1. So um, I, I felt strongly that in both series, once it was at 3-2 and then came back to the, the leading team's home park, they both, it, my, my picks were either Braves and Astros in six mm -hmm. or... Red Sox and Dodgers in seven. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that, um, and we certainly saw this when the Cubs were in the World Series. I feel that the momentum completely shifts when the road team wins game six because all of the pressure is now on the home team who had a chance to close it out in game six and did not do so. Um, yeah. And I think like historically, if you if you go back and look at home teams who lost to game six, I, I am basing this on nothing. <laughs> but I really feel that overwhelmingly the road team wins game seven in that scenario. Yeah. It's like, obviously we remember that from 2016 for sure. Uh, with, with our guys. Um, and then, I mean, that's uh, also just another Cubs example. That was the 2003 NLCS, right? When the Cubs were up mm -hmm. three, two, then lost the Alex Gonzalez game six. And then, you know, I think game seven just felt like we were dead from right. from the get go. You know, um, so yeah. Forget that the Cubs were up four nothing in game five on that 
or Ramos Ramirez Grand Slam. Yeah. It's like this weird lost part of Cubs history. Yeah, just a, what a we, what a bizarre series overall, where the, the that team was just incredibly hot, sort of like the Braves are now, where I mean, you know, it was an eighty eight win team, but it, it, they just got so hot and uh, right. and then completely unhot all at once. Um, but yeah, and also I, if you think yeah. about it, uh, just real quick, uh, like yeah. if the Cubs lose Game Six to the Dodgers in the sixteen LCS. You know that Wrigley has that like weird nervous energy for game seven. A hundred percent. And I think like people talk about some people are like momentum doesn't exist in baseball. I think where it does exist is in the pressure the players feel and put on themselves. I mean, I think that's what momentum is, is just a shifting of the pressure you put on yourself and the and the confidence you feel. And that does affect how you play because the games are played by human beings. You know, it's like it's sort of like when there's uh, you see statisticians be like, there's no such thing as clutch. And I, this is one way where I go a little old school where, uh, you know, I think there is and you can say it's random, but some players are better in certain scenarios than others are. And I think I, I feel that way because like I've been that way in my life, you know, like mm -hmm. I've definitely felt pressure and been worse. And then I've felt confidence and been better in scenarios where totally. like it should have been even there's no otherwise there's no difference. It's all internal. Um, and I think that sort of thing, it's like that's in that sense, momentum does exist in baseball because you can like a game seven, everyone nervous about blowing it, especially I think if it had gone to seven with Atlanta, L.A., since that just happened like last year, right. I think they would have felt that a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, like for that, for the, for a fan base that has uh, a, a pretty strongly annoying slash problematic thing that they keep doing, keeping encouraged to do by the t by the TV and whoever's running the uh, the stadium tomahawk chop noises. The the Atlanta Braves fan base hasn't gotten a chance to have a team in the World Series since the 90s. So, you yeah. know, that's uh, I, so I, I typically root for teams who have been waiting longer too. you know. Do the Atlanta Braves only have one World Series? Meaning, like, when that team has been in Atlanta? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Won? I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's just, uh, yeah, just the, the 95. The 95. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, the other thing about the, um, the Red Sox Astros series that was spoken about a lot is in, in game four, when the Red Sox are up 2 1, the Laz Diaz call or no call. Um, which listen, regardless of how, even if it were a ball right down the middle and the call was blown, you probably still shouldn't give up seven runs with two outs, uh -huh. but it's very interesting to think about that kind of butterfly effect moment in that mm -hmm. game and in that entire series, because if that's called a strike, the Red Sox go to the bottom of the ninth two, two, mm -hmm. and it's entirely possible, especially, you know, you can't just say that the bottom of the ninth would have gone the same as it no, did right. when they were down nine two. Like mm -hmm. they they play that differently, and if they end up winning that game um, with a three one lead, probably they they at least have a better shot of holding on to win that series. So yeah, um, I I don't I think you and I are very much in agreement on this, but the the idea that an umpire who was consistently the worst or one of the worst in the regular season would get that assignment in the league championship series is lunacy to me. It, like, it's lunacy. There's, and there's no accountability. Uh, is certainly no transparent accountability from the umpires ever. There never is. It's like, I mean, the fact that Joe West called more games than any other umpire in history is a good example of this because none of this shit's based on merit with umpires, right. you know? So <laughs> yeah, it's, it sucks when you, an umpire goes behind the plate, like a Laz Diaz and you just know, well, this guy's bad. He, I, mm -hmm. as a baseball fan, this is one of the names I don't want to hear in this scenario. You know, he's right. in that little, uh, like a small group of people. You're like, uh, you know, uh, well, and, and now that we actually have the technology to see who's doing a good job and who is doing yeah. a poor job, I feel like it should be a very straight line with the umpires who do the best during the regular season, get to work the postseason, and get them off. Uh, yeah. And, and, uh, get them off the plate too. Like the, you should only have the most elite strike call it strike and ball calling umpires behind the plate mm -hmm. in the postseason. And if that means they have to work two out of like every other game behind the plate or every third game behind the plate, good, fine, good, pay them more, you know, like mm -hmm. they, because that is the most important position on the field from an umpiring perspective, uh, especially with replay, getting all the base calls, uh, you, you know, correct. Now though they're just, we shouldn't be, 
part like participation trophying home plate umpire assignments. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the equivalent is like if your team handled personnel the way the umpires union does assigning umpires jobs or, or the MLB does, you'd be like, we have the dumbest manager in sports. <laughs> uh, like yeah. if you right. if you started somebody who hit 130 during the regular season in LCS, everyone would yeah. be like, are you crazy? It would be but like that's what we're dealing that we're dealing with the umpire equivalent of that. Absolutely. It would be like betting Eric Sogard leadoff in 2021. Did we do that? Probably. But uh, it would yes. be like Dusty Baker betting Jason Worth second uh, against the Cubs in game five of the LDS. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, wait, he did do that. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's 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 very weird. And uh, also, I want to say the Red Sox losing against the Astros. You know, the Red Sox were the other cheaters. <laughs> like, it's uh, oh, it was, that was hilarious. To it's me. funny I, that Red Sox fans shitting on the Astros. Like, who who's your manager? Yeah, who is your manager who took like a fake timeout just now? You know, like for a year, and then I uh, think comes right back. Uh, yeah, I mean, like this is if the Astros were going to advance against anyone, they advanced against the second most cheatery team that we're aware of, you right. know, um, in this sense. So whatever it's I was rooting for the Red Sox, but that that specific matchup was less of a tragedy, I would say. Um, I tell you, the Red Sox had a real, uh, frankly, like last couple of years Cubs vibe in the sense that like. They were very inconsistent in, in the sense that, you know, games two and three, it looks like no one's ever going to get them out again. And mm -hmm. then for no reason at all, it looks like they will never score again. And I feel yeah. like we've seen so many Cubs teams like that where it's like, you know, you win the Friday game 13 to one and then you lose Saturday and Sunday like by one run and you score less than two each game. And you're like, what? I don't understand this. Yeah. Yeah. It, that would ha, has to be very frustrating uh, to watch as fans uh, in the game one matchup we've got going on tonight. Your boy, Charlie Morton is going up against Framber Val, Framber Valdez, excuse me, um, tonight. So that's a, that's an interesting matchup. Valdez has been has been extremely good lately. Uh, he's a he's a young young left hander, and uh, Morton, my God, man, that guy's still he was touching ninety eight on the gun in the last series. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And uh, as as I've mentioned before, he uh, went to high school with my my girlfriend. So that, another reason to root for the Braves. I forgot that. Yeah, that's cool. And 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 he, all reviews we know of him as a high schooler are positive. He's just basically like, he yeah. was tall and dated pretty girls and was good at sports. Now that's we're talking. We it's the American <laughs> dream. It's Charlie Morton. That is. Yeah, he's, uh, he has gotten better with age for sure. I mean, he's got. I think he's almost forty, right? He's like 30, yeah. 40. Yeah, and the uh, and he's another guy that the Rays just chose not to pay with their genius mm. uh, player, uh, their genius front office who makes the most of every dollar. Would have they probably would have liked to have a Charlie Morton around uh, this yeah. year, but the the Braves are paying him and and they're they're getting by with it. And the Braves, uh, yeah, the, the Braves are a team that made like they really went for it at the midseason mark around the trade deadline in a way that. Um, I think was kind of like unexpected because they weren't crushing the league. They were, I mean, they easily could have gone the way of the Cubs really uh, with Acuna being out, but they added a bunch, including uh, our, our boys, Jorge Soler and, uh, and, and Jack. Yeah. They, uh, they really reloaded there. Um, but yeah, we're looking ahead at this series. Do, uh, do we have, do we have predicts? Do we have, uh, what are, what are the things you're, you're looking out for here? Well, I am, as I said, I'm rooting for the Braves. I think you are as well, uh, albeit begrudgingly. My my head says the Astros win because they're a better team and because life is not fair and everything's bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I kind of have this sense and hope that the the Braves are, are a bit like the Nats a couple of years ago where they're just like in team of destiny mode mm -hmm. and actually will, will win this series. So... Um, I'm actually going to go Braves and six. How about hey, that? there you go. I didn't even know I was going to say that till just now. That's yeah. You're you just you just you're feeling it, uh, which would mean they would win in Houston because the game uh, the series begins tonight in Houston. Yeah. So we've got two in Houston, three in Atlanta, then two in Houston. Um, yeah, I'll say I'll say, I guess I'll say Astros and six for all the for a lot of the reasons you said beyond baseball, but specifically just like it would be it would suck. So uh, I would believe it uh, this year uh, that that is just what would happen. But really, it's like for me, the Astros lineup is just 
it's good the the whole way. It, you don't get a breather until like the eighth spot in this lineup. Right. You know, Kyle Tucker hit friggin' 30 homers. He's down there hitting seventh, you know, um, and he's a guy who steals bases. He's he's just been very good. Um, and this team makes uh, has an over 80 percent contact rate and no other team has that. So it's just like they're extraordinarily annoying to get out. The only thing I think that could hurt the Astros is like their pitching is weird. Lance McCullers is out. He's he's not going to be uh, in, in, in this World Series and it's going to be piecing together some shorter outings. Like Zach Grinke has been interesting the way they've used him. It seems like he goes for like a short starting stretch as a reliever is sort of like what he's mm-hmm. been doing uh, a lot of. Right. And uh, well, the, the odor easy experiment did not go well. <laughs> no, the odor. There was a bad odor easy uh, experiment. <laughs> it was it stunk, my friends, is what I'm saying. Um it was. It certainly hearkened the uh, that gif of Pete Alonso just hitting like home run after home run after home. That was mm-hmm. very, very <laughs> yeah. much a batting practice esque pitching performance. Yeah, um, yeah, very much so. But I mean, the games like should be good, and it's like I feel like even yeah. with even with World Series, I'm not interested in going in. They are, you know, the energy is fun to watch. It's like. I, I feel like when the Cubs aren't in it, it almost feels like a different sport to me now. I like I feel like detached in a way. Yeah, and and you, when you watch the games and they do those close-ups of fans and they're just like you know literally like chewing their hands or pulling their hoodie over their head really <laughs> tight. Like you and I both know exactly how that feels, but it, oh, it also feels so far away in this moment. Like I I don't know how you are. I, I've always been kind of like Rain Man esque with dates and like as, throughout every every year throughout October. <laughs> I always I'm like, oh, man, this was the day that the Cubs did this or this was, you know, this was the day Mm. they won the pennant or or whatever. And I I cannot wait to to get back to the Cubs giving me ulcers in October because I that it was so fun. Yeah, it's much more fun. It's I mean, being nervous all day. Uh, you know, uh, is doesn't sound fun, but yeah, it really was. It really is. And I remember, like, there's a stretch of uh, a road I drove from like my mom's house into Chicago on the day of Game Seven, and it, I like mm-hmm. I have such a sense memory of that being like a very overcast day in in Chicago, and just the anticipation of like at so. I mean, I, I know I remember I was like, well, by about you know by 11 p.m. tonight, uh, I'll be very happy or I'll be very sad. It's going to happen, and then it was way after 11 p.m. because it was the longest game of all time. Uh, yeah, maybe not by minutes, but emotionally, it was easily the longest game of all time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like that is. Uh, I would like to get back to that too. But uh, in any case, shout out to the Ricketts for letting Jamie enjoy her birthday. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, for letting my wife enjoy her uh, October 23rd birthday. We we did not have to focus on any Cub stuff this year for uh, for a big one. So that's very nice. How do you feel about uh, the Dusty Baker angle coming into this? Since that's, you he know. Is the, he yeah. is like one of the only elements of the Astros that I could allow myself to root for. Like, yeah. I, I do think that he uh, had had plenty of flaws as a yeah. Cubs manager, but I still overwhelmingly have like positive feelings about him as a man. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that he's probably somebody who's in the Hall of Fame anyway, I would say, but he's like a borderline case because of his just like, egregious playoff <laughs> choking i don't know i mean yeah. it's hard to put all of that on him but um, yeah i agree yeah so i i i'm I'll, I'll put it this way if if the white Sox were in the world series i would be much happier to root for the white Sox as a team but mm-hmm. the idea of tony tony la Russa winning again would make me vomit yeah, I, I I'm I'm with that. Like, if if the Astros win, I guess the Dusty Baker getting one would be the only thing where I'd be like, ah, all right, good for him, I guess. You know, like I don't have like Dusty obviously did not handle our guys uh, the way we would have liked in 2003, and then uh, you know the wheels came off in 2004. And uh, yeah. I mean, it's amazing how many great. <laughs> it is amazing how many great teams. He's taken to a great collapse, you know, <laughs> like he's taken yeah. and like the San Francisco Barry Bonds years too, you know, they it's, were up five, nothing in the seventh inning. Yeah. It's just hard. It's and hard. The, to rally, lose. Monkey, the yeah. rally monkey got him. It is hard to lose games like that, but he's managed to do it a lot of places. And maybe if you're rooting against the Astros, that's the one uh, leftover hope. He's got one more team to tank at the very end yeah. when it seems like they should win. But, but yeah. uh, unintentionally, that was kind of a fun, a fun uh, kind of, 
wordplay there uh, that he hasn't managed to do it. That would be a great autobiography if he finally wins. I managed to do it. <laughs> By Dusty Baker with a 3D dangerous toothpick coming off the front cover, uh, <laughs> pop up style. All uh, I do is come up with t shirt names and book titles. That's my man, whole, you're, that's my it's, whole it, shtick. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, it's not. But yeah. Um, so you're going Astros in six. I'm going yeah. Braves in six. You and I will watch uh, game two together. I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to that. Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's a fun, a fun series. We'll see how it goes. Um, and and lastly, we've talked about uh, about the Astros a lot in terms of what enormous dicks they are. And mm -hmm. if you need to trim your enormous dick, yes. what would you do? Uh, you know, you'd just go over to Manscaped and you'd want to pay a slightly less enormous fee than you normally would. It's not that the fee is always enormous, but this will shrink it. This will give you some fee shrinkage if you use the code away games. <laughs> It'll take 20% off the cost. You get free shipping. You keep us doing this podcast. If you do that too, going over to Manscaped using the promo code away games. Boom. Best Boom. transition yet. That was very good. So tight, as tight as the grooming near your dong, everybody. This, <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. This is uh, at Away Games Pod. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. If you haven't yet, give us a rating and a review if you don't mind, if you have a minute. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next week, maybe wrapping up the World Series. We'll see how it goes. Quite possibly, yeah. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>